<clears throat> okay, thanks everybody for uh, joining this webinar. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. Okay, thanks everybody for uh, joining. Quite a lot of people on today, so that's great. Um, I want to just let you know that if you've got any questions, please do just type them into the Q&A and I will get to them pretty much in real time. As soon as I see there's a question, I will uh, try and answer it at the time. Uh, we've got... Recruitment consultant in an agency placing um, accountants. I then worked for the recruitment marketing business, Havas. I worked in human resource services at PwC and um, <clears throat> then moved on to starting my own research and sourcing company uh, before uh, creating Candidate ID, which is uh, recruitment technology. Uh, I'm The reason that we decided to build a product all about talent lead generation is because I was talking to the world's largest pharmaceutical company back in 2015. And they told me that every candidate we were finding for them and every candidate that their internal team was finding for them and that everybody coming in through advertising, around 70% of them were already on their candidate database, their applicant tracking system. So I asked some other large companies, is this the same for you? And they said, yeah, roughly 70%. So that pharmaceutical company had 10 million people on their database. Some of the other companies I've talked to you know, nearly the same millions of candidates, dollar asset they weren't using. And I thought, hold on, we've got to try and do something to, to fix this because there is a widespread um, addiction to identifying brand new candidates when most organizations already have lots and lots of people on their database that they need to be um, keeping in con contact with and they need to be understanding more about. So the concept of talent lead gen is all about being able to monitor and track every link that a candidate is clicking around your content and anything that's meaningful will send a signal into your recruiters to tell them that they should make contact with that individual. Now, of course, 
there's certain roles that you're going to be hiring um, every so often, such as in most cases, it might be a tax manager or a management accountant or a digital marketing executive or something like that. Roles that are kind of support roles, unless your company is, of course, um, a tax firm or, or a management consultant, management accounting firm or a, or a digital marketing firm, in which case they'll be core um, evergreen positions. The evergreen positions are the positions that you're going to be hiring regularly. Likely there are in normal times, in non-coronavirus times, there's likely to be more jobs than there are people. And so what you'd really need to understand is who's interested in your organization based on what are they clicking on. And if you can get those um, alerts in real time that tell you, then you're going to be able to get onto those candidates much more quickly. So I'm going to talk through literally 30 different workflows, which you're going to be able to use to um, have hot leads coming into you. So let's take a look at some of the um, reasons why this is so important. So um, according to IBM, candidates will spend six months researching potential employers, and they'll probably look at 16 or more different touch points. What that means is they're looking at your content because it's available to them. They can find out what it's like to work at your organization. So instead of talking to you as a recruiter in the first instance, they're doing their self-directed research. This is how we go about buying holidays, uh, buying houses, buying cars. We tend to go online and do a lot of research. It's a high consideration decision and candidates do exactly the same thing. According to ERE, the best candidates are off the market in 10 days. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have started sending out their, they've started their journey and that's them off the market in 10 days. That's from the point that they've decided they're gonna start applying for jobs. You want to know who's looking at your organization and considering your organization before they start sending their CV to anybody else, especially your competitors. And that's what we want to be tracking. Some of the benefits from organizations I know of, of talent lead gen, daily hot candidate leads straight into your recruiters inboxes. What this means is a call list. It means that every morning, eight o'clock, if you've got all your hot leads coming in, then you've got a call list. You know exactly who to prioritize making contact with that day in relation to the vacancies that you're handling. It means a considerable reduction in sourcing time because you can use your own database. When the vacancy goes live, you can use your own database because you know who's on a high engagement score and who's likely to be ready for a conversation. That's based on the cumulative impact of all the different clicks around your content. You can generate an optimum personalized candidate experience. And that's because with every click that you make, you're able to track what, are they, uh, what have they been doing and automatically you can set up workflows, which mean that the next step is determined based on the last click that they've made. And the final big benefit of the talent lead gen approach is that you can get much better recruitment marketing performance because you can see which, uh, what, what of your content is getting the most clicks, which is demand, which is interest, and what is getting limited interest. So <clears throat> which tweets are bringing candidates through the funnel from being cold to being warm to being higher ready. Which tweets are not doing that? Whichever is working, you do more of it. Whichever is not working, you do less of it. Onto the different um, workflows. So here's some of the things that you want to do. We think about things in terms of a scoring model. So a balanced scorecard score like model might be if the candidate opens an email they get one point. If they look at a video, they get five points. If the candidate is looking at content about skills for software engineers, they get one point. If they're looking at the software engineer job description, they might get 10 points and you get an alert. So that's kind of how the scoring model that I would recommend works. You can apply this. You don't need to be using candidate ID to take this approach. You could use bit.ly links. You can use MailChimp to do some of this stuff. So there's lots of other ways that you can go about uh, achieving this. So this is not a candidate ID session. This is a talent lead gen session. So here's some of the workflows that we know work best. Candidate opens the email 
automatically they get one point when they open that email. So you're not setting this up for each candidate, you're setting this up for the pipeline. So a pipeline might be software engineers, accountants, product managers, project managers. There's lots of different pipelines that you can create for the roles that you're likely to be hiring regularly. So you set up this base workflow, which is anytime a candidate opens an email, anytime a candidate within that pipeline, then they get one point for opening that email. Now think about the subject headings, of course. If the subject heading is click here to look at this job and then contact me and they open that um, email, then the points might be higher than one for that specific email. But as a base sort of set of um, scoring rules, uh, then this is one that works really well. Let's take this a little bit further and add a bit more automation in here. So if the email, let's go back to the, back to the last one. If the email is opened, which is the fixed line, if it's not opened, which is the dotted line, okay? So on this next example, candidates all get the email. If the email is not opened, then the candidates get a text message with exactly the same uh, call to action. It might be click here to take a look at whatever it is you want them to look at, and then click and then press uh, reply with a Y if you want me to contact you about this opportunity, something like that. Now, what we know from data, our data, is that 23% of additional engagement will occur if you put in this simple workflow. If they don't open the email, send them a text message. You'll set a, you'll set a, uh, a time limit on when that happens, likely to be two days. I would say within two days, if they haven't opened the email, they're very unlikely to open that email. It's down to less than 10% of opens will happen after 48 hours. So at 48 hours, get them a text message and that'll generate 23% of additional engagement. Now let's take the scoring kind of system a little bit further. Candidate opens the email, their points go up by one. Candidate then visits the career site and their points go up by an additional five. Okay, really good. Introducing further stages, okay? So we think about candidates as cold, warm, and high already. Another simple one then. Anytime the candidate opens the email, their points go up by one and they get moved to warm. So they're, they're interacting with you. We think about candidates in terms of cold, warm, high, or ready. Cold means they're not, look, they're not doing anything that suggests they're ready for a conversation. Warm means they're interacting with your brand. High or ready means they're interacting with your career site or your landing pages with job adverts or anything like that. <clears throat> Let's take a, take a look at the next one. Um, candidates moving from warm to high or ready. So you're building up further um, actions, further decisions and actions. The things in green we call a decision. That means if this, then that. It's a simple methodology. If they do that, then this. If they don't do that, then that's what happens. So in this case, the email's opened and the candidate gets one point. They're moved to warm. The, if the candidate then goes to the career site, they get five additional points and they move to higher ready. Okay, another really good um, simple workflow. Let's come on to the things that are gonna send you alerts straight into your um, in, uh, inbox. If the candidate um, visits the URL, which is a job search, then they move to higher ready. Because if they're doing a job search, then that suggests probably give them a call and that could be alert by email and various other ways that you can have that alert you can have that alert within our platform for example it's just a just a, a red flash up at the top right hand side right okay really meaningful alerts now if the candidate viewed the job description. So in this workflow, we're starting to get smarter with our workflows here. Candidates all get an email. If the email is not opened, then the candidates all get a text message. That text message is gonna generate 23% more additional engagement. If the candidate then 
visits the job description, the recruiter gets a notification. What we call user, because it might be a recruitment marketer, it might be a sourcer, it might be somebody else within your team. But send the user a notification, job description visit. And that means that the recruiter is likely to be able to get straight onto that candidate. This is one I like even better. If you've got lots of interactions with your job descriptions and you've got lots of people actually applying to the jobs, then what you really want to know is not who looked at the job, but who looked at the job and did not apply. In this case, the pipeline of candidates gets the email. Um, if it's not opened, they get a text message. If the job description is visited, but the candidate does not click apply, no apply, then the recruiter gets a notification. This is one of my favorite workflows because it's quite simple to create, but it is also going to send you hot leads, like really targeted hot leads. If you've got um, a lot of candidates, and to be honest, you're not looking to chase them, then you can ask them to do another step. So the candidate visits the job description, but then does not apply. You want them to receive an email, which is designed to get them to schedule a call. So you might include a Calendly link or something like that. And the message says, hey, we, I saw you looked at whatever that job is. It's up to you if you want to reveal that information. If you, if you don't want to tell them you know exactly what they've done, then you know, that's really up to you. But they'll get, instead of you getting a notification, the candidate gets a notification and it's up to them to do the next step. That would work really well in the situation where you're actually not that short of candidates and you need them to prove a bit more commitment before you're going to give them your time. Okay, let's put in a bit more qualifying um, steps. So if the candidate visits the job description and they are in Chicago, then the recruiter gets a notification. Okay, so you can start to layer in various bits of qualifying criteria before you are alerted that that candidate um, should get a call from you. You wanna save yourself some time? If you're desperate, if you're hiring things like data scientists, for example, then you probably don't care wh whether they're in Chicago or Timbuktu or the moon. Uh, you want that notification. But if you've got some candidates already, you might want to put a bit more qualifying criteria in. Here's another bit of qualifying criteria. So in this case, you, you're doing what we call progressive profiling, which is as the candidates are interacting with your content, maybe every third thing that they click on, you could ask them a question and you can do a simple swipe left or swipe right. So for example, here, the candidate swipes right to confirm they've got machine learning skills. Then they're moved into, in this case, they're moved into the machine learning campaign. And this is how you can go about um, creating really meaningful candidate experiences, really personalized candidate experiences, because the candidate is going to get the next best step according to what they clicked last. Yes, this is digital marketing, but it's all simple stuff that recruiters can do. So you all would also, you would just click on here and you would also say, and send me or send the machine learning recruiter a um, an alert to let them know that this candidate has confirmed they've got machine learning skills uh, the next one this is a really good one as well this is around social media so the candidate clicks sorry i've just gone too far there if the candidate clicks the link from any of your content from your uh, landing pages or your social media or your career site which says um, click here to take a look at the, uh, at the hiring manager's LinkedIn profile. Anytime the candidate in the pipeline clicks on that, the recruiter, well, in this case, the hiring manager is actually sent an alert. That'll probably be to say, connect with this candidate on, on LinkedIn. 
you could, of course, have that alert coming into the recruiter or somebody else in the team. Another social media example. From any of your content, the candidate clicks, uh, follow our careers Twitter page. In this case, an alert goes to your social media executive to tell them that they should do something. That might be give that candidate a shout out, it might be follow them in return, or of course, you could have that alert not going to the notification, not going to your social media exec, but actually going to your sourcer or a recruiter. Uh, some other examples. I've actually, this is a duplicate, my apologies. This is if the candidate looks at the job description but doesn't apply, schedule a call. Okay, let's talk about um, some of the permanent links that you can place in different places. So you've got lots of different places that you can post links to. Examples are every page of your career site, every landing page, your uh, email accounts, your email um, footer, the auto signatures, your LinkedIn, the hiring manager's LinkedIn, the, your company LinkedIn page, your company Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Glassdoor, Stack Exchange, GitHub. There's lots and lots of different places that you can post links which are permanently there and anytime a candidate clicks on that link, it sends you an alert. Okay, some examples would be if the candidate clicks to join your talent network, which to be honest, normally means be become part of a list, but I, I, I really think it shouldn't. It should, a talent network should really be that they're gonna get content from you and that they're gonna be able to interact with you. But join our talent network. The candidate clicks on that, the recruiter gets an alert to let them know. Another example would be, of course they click, put these links all over, the, all over your uh, social media, your career site, your landing pages, schedule a call. The candidate wants to schedule a call, alert to recruiter. The search jobs link. If a candidate's clicking on search jobs, then you probably want to know about that. Now, of course, there will be certain types of roles that you hire for where you're inundated with candidates and you really don't, don't want more, you want less, in which case the progressive profiling is important, which is swipe right to say you've got machine learning skills or swipe right to confirm you've got two plus years experience or swipe right to confirm you are a qualified chartered accountant or whatever the information, additional information might be. But if they, if they swipe right on those things and then click search jobs link, yeah, you might want to absolutely know. Update your profile at our talent network. That's another good one. If they're updating their profile, um, maybe they joined it two years ago, two years later, they update their profile. You want to know that that candidate's become active again. Some examples of where to post. As I mentioned, on every landing page, on your email signatures, on every page of the career site, and on the company um, Twitter page and other social networks. A Twitter example, we've just taken this from our own uh, company Twitter page. Um, in this case, the call to action is book a demo. Um, the candidate clicks on that link and we get a notification to say that the candidate has clicked on that and I should consider having a conversation with that person reaching out to them. Um, of course, in this case, if somebody clicks on that, then I am going to have a conversation with them. Another example, uh, this one's at LinkedIn, uh, request again. It's another permanent link. So in your case, it would be uh, search, on jo search for jobs with us here with that link. Uh, join our talent network, update your profile, uh, schedule a call or, or something like that. Um, here's an example. This is... Um, a bit more intricate, it's, it's not just a click the link, this is actually update your data with us. So this is for Nielsen, um, the marketing uh, data analytics company. And so they're just asking for some additional information. And they've got this on the career site, they've got it on landing pages, they've got it on uh, various parts of social media as well. So placing this kind of call to action, which is update your data with us, in lots of different locations. 
Here's another example. I think this is, yeah, Mott McDonald. They have a specific energy community. So that's for people that are interested in uh, thermal and renewables, transmission, distribution, nuclear projects. We'd love to keep in touch with you if you're interested in it. Okay. So again, that's a very simple call to action. First name, last name, email. Here's one more, which is just sign up for updates. So sign up for updates, another Mott McDonald example. So by doing, by doing all of this, what we want is hot leads constantly coming in um, to our inbox so that we know who to pick up the phone to, who to prioritize making contact with. But what we're also doing at the same time is we're scoring all of the interactions, we're tracking and scoring all the interactions. So if you consider this like a talent pipeline, you're building up a talent pipeline and you can see, for example, that in the last week, John opened an email from you that did nothing else. Whereas Jane opened an email, clicked a link, looked at a landing page, looked at your company on Glassdoor and YouTube and the hiring manager LinkedIn and the job description. Jane's clearly more likely to be ready for a conversation than John. If you've got 500 Johns and Janes, and you can filter them based on the engagement score, then it's likely you're gonna be able to see that um, 50 of the 500 are gonna be like Jane, who have done this kind of activity in the last week, and you'll, you'll know who to look, look at based on their scoring, based on filtering them according to their scoring model. There's, so this is how we would recommend um, building talent pipelines and getting to shortlist much, much faster. Today, of course, we're living in really they or may not be returning to the job that they left. I know one organization, for example, that has 500 furloughers in the UK and is going to be bringing back between 250 to 300 of those people. I would recommend that you are doing, are, are keeping in contact with them with a kind of program. Uh, feel free to contact me if you've got any questions about that and I can send you a link to a blog that I wrote about it um, recently, which um, will give you some ideas. When you go to land those 250 to 300 people out of the 500 who have been furloughed, you want the absolute best choices. And the other thing is we've got companies being pretty aggressive right now. So IBM, for example, their chief human resources officer said to right now is the best time to go and start cherry picking your competitor's best talent. Um, and so companies I know are doing that. Um, and we believe it's really important to keep in touch with your furloughed pipeline. Um, just a recap of the benefits of the talent lead gen approach. Daily hot candidate leads into your recruiter's inboxes, considerable reduction in sourcing time, an optimum personalized candidate experience, and a much Sing employer brand people we were looking for their skills so if you're a candidate, if you're looking for send or employer a people, it will automatically either send um, the link
Um, I'm, I'm conscious I haven't had any questions throughout the, uh, the actual webinar itself, but if you have any, then um, please feel free to ask me uh, just now. And if you don't have any questions just now, then that's absolutely fine. You can feel free to make contact with me at any point. Uh, my contact details are on the uh, screen just now. And I look forward to talking to you about Talent Lead Gen and how it's gonna be able to help you generate 50% uh, more hires per recruiter by the end of year one, which is what Specsavers achieved. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time to uh, listen in. And I wish everybody at this uh, strange time, I wish everybody all my very best. Thanks very much.